to go back to the the, um, the ego inflation point, I, I feel like I've noticed recently that that one substance in particular seems seems to be associated with this, and it's 5-MeO-DMT, the, uh, you yeah. know, the, the frog venom chemical that's found yeah, typically in this frog venom. And I've been reflecting on that because I, I suddenly just noticed there's a handful of people who are the, the main culprits of, of, of this <laughs> overly confident, um, quite quite kind of mean spirited, overly kind of yeah, not not coming from a kind of humble <laughs> place you could say, and. I wonder if it's the, you know, so, so with 5 meo right, you, you have this very similar to, DMT, to normal DMT. These two things get confused a lot. People sometimes think DMT is an abbreviation of 5 meo I think. So they're very different substances, but it has a similar kind of almost breakthrough effect where you, you vaporize it, you have this very rapid takeoff, yeah. and then you feel, as you described it, what's called a non-dual experience where there's just existence. There's no separation between you and existence. It's just feels like eternal beingness and then you come down and and you've had this kind of like an enlightenment experience right and Mm -hmm. my instinct is it's because it's so fast it's the thing we spoke about earlier how the ego your sense of identity your narrative about yourself is pushed aside this experience you know the ego doesn't really have the experience the experience is so big it just kind of it's there and then the ego comes back And then it kind of, it, it, it hasn't, it, it's completely not integrated. It, the ego just takes that as a story and then says, well, now I'm going to walk off. I've not done any work on myself. I've not developed in any way, really. I'm now going to say I've had that. I'll, I'll add that to my list of things that makes me great as a person. That, that's my current speculation. Do you have any, does that feel valid to you? Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's a couple of things. I mean, one is just that yeah, the 5 a.m. your experience is, a, a very kind of like almost like a next level sort of psychic and in, in a different kind of way i so say it, it does seem like a, a, a fast track to this non-dual experience um but it's it's not as visual as as, as sort of like the dmt experience we described earlier so it's, it's a very different sort of experience and i think the other thing around that is that it doesn't really have a any kind of sort of tradition um or framework around it so and it's also very readily available and not not so much in the frog venom form the frog venom's a little bit sort of tricky to hold up but in terms of people just being able to go online and and buy it it's it's fairly readily available and is illegal in a lot of places so you don't have to jump through the same kind of hoops to to be able to get hold of it so and i think that those things that the power of the experience the availability of it and just what yeah, the, the kind of the scenario you described of, of how you try and rationalize the experience. Um, I think it, it, it is a, a, a kind of a bit of a, um, almost like a perfect storm, really, because if you have somebody who, who has access to this stuff and, you know, they, they are just kind of like doing it, you know, on their own, they could be a sort of, you know, a very sort of loner type or whatever. Um, then yeah, you, you, these delusions of grandeur can appear full of font and there's nothing there to challenge with. You've not got that kind of group share structure we talked about earlier. There's no sort of traditional framework. You might not even have sort of family or, or, or friends around you. And it's a very, um, it's a very solo experience. So you, this is not something like, say, in mushrooms, which you could do in a sort of a, in a, in a group setting. This is, yeah, very, I would say even more of an ordeal than an NDMT. So... And I think with it, I think there is something to that five meo uh, experience. And it's funny that you you bring it up because it is something I've had my eye on recently. I've been watching a few documentaries about it. Um, I have had a, uh, an experience with with five meo with, with the uh, before with the frog venom version. Um, and yeah, and I, and I with having seen a lot of this ego inflation going on, it's kind of a question like. Is there there's something fundamentally in this that drives people nuts? Um, is there, you know, I, is it one of those things where you are just playing with fire here? Perhaps a fire that you know some people can get away with, but if you are if you are susceptible to that sort of thing, then it can just send you very far over the edge. Because a lot of these these kind of people I'm, I'm referring to in some of the videos, they are completely self-assured in what i would say is, is the delusional thinking um it, it's completely baked to them it's 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 fully formed in their head and, and it's there's no other way around it and so which makes it kind of impenetrable you, you know even when you start pointing out sort of some of the flaws in the thinking it's 
you know that you can just that you think well that's a great paradox that's the you know that there's there's ways out of it for them um but yeah so i i was kind of thinking okay d do i want to I, I certainly want to have a better understanding of this play, of, of this, what's going on around 5-MEO. Um, it's kind of made me think, okay, well, maybe I need to sort of revisit that experience. So that is probably something I'm going to be doing within uh, the next couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, I'll sort of, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll look to people like you to sort of keep my feet on the ground if, if I start talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh, completely inflated as well. I mean, I, I've got my wife and kids around me, so so they kind of they, there's nothing that keeps you grounded quite like a uh, yeah, being told to make the tea. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's a very it, it's it's an interesting and very um, yeah, very very strange experience. There's a, I just watched a really good documentary on it called um, uh, Bo I think it's called Buffo Are Various Reloaded. And it was a, it's a kind of a, a sequel to another uh, documentary around 5MEO, which was called, uh, I think, was it called the, the Hidden Secret or something like that? Um, and yeah, it, it's a very good documentary. You've got three guys really sort of breaking down the sort of the, the, the pros and the cons of this experience. And they're very good in pointing out what's, you know, it's not for everyone, the potential sort of, you know, dangers within it. And I think, I think probably more than any other substance, five of you can really pull the rug from under people. I, it, that's, that's, you know, what I, what I see in, in, in a lot of the sort of the, the people who, who have these kind of ego inflation reactions or just very sort of strange reactions to it. But again, there's no, no traditions where this is one where we're kind of like inventing our own traditions around it. It's, it really is a kind of a wild west substance. So, yeah, not sure how I how exactly I feel about that one, but I, I think it's it, it's something I am curious about enough to to revisit. Yeah, and when it comes to the the kind of overconfidence of of the or lack of humility of the people kind of talking about this stuff, it's 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 tricky because I think a lot of the pushback maybe you got as well is that these people do offer value, they do offer genuine insights as well and interesting thoughts alongside kind of overblown claims. And the thing with the non the non dual insight, as I you know think about it in its in its core it is it is kind of different to everything else in that it's like it's it's so simple it's kind of just saying like reality exists everything exists and you're part of it and it's it's just a kind of a knowing of that in its in its most basic sense like beyond words and so it is unlike everything else in that it's not a story it's not a narrative it's like and so it can't really be full. So it is, it is true. There is this weird, I think this is the thing they pick up on and they think I've got it. I've got the secret. I know it's true. And so that's all, that's all like all true. But then, then when you start to, I think the mistake people make is, you know, this is why meditation is valuable because in the meditative state, you know it wordlessly. But then when you come back and you start to put words, words on it and you say only consciousness exists and it's God and you can relate to it. I'm God. And that's when every word you say, you're getting further and further away from that, that actual insight. And that's yeah. where you can start to kind of, and then as you say, once people start to claim that they can, you know, manipulate the physical world with their mind, um, that's when you get into the realms of like, well, if you can, then you should probably just demonstrate it, you know, because <laughs> yeah. as no one has ever done. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of the, the problems with it, 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 is this, it, it is this linguistic game because you, you, can, you can backtrack to the experience and and you can start agreeing with people so you know someone says i've had this right. non-dual experience and i was i was one with the universe and you can say yeah okay i, I, I felt that too i'm with you and you can say and that you know that everything in the universe must be like you know it, it is all one and we, we, you know that thing is god and you can say well sure you know we could say it's god you know it, it does there is a, this feeling of the sacred the divine i sure i can call it god and so that you know and then you know, step three, I so so I am God. And you're like, yeah, okay, you know, and you can work through this. But then by by the time you get to step seven or eight, it really starts getting out there. But because you can agree with the first like six or seven steps, then by the time you get to you know to step seven or eight, wherever, like, and you know, and everything is imagined. I am God, and I am I am manifesting you here, James. You 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 are just a figment of my imagination. Uh, you know, everything that is happening to me is just, it just by my own willpower. So I'm, I'm just not going to try in life anymore. And by that point, the, the, there's just no breaks on that framework because right. 
the kind of points one through five just seems so solid and you've got the experience to back it up that yeah it, it's that that little kind of jumping into the wacky is a, a jump too far uh, for some some people and again and I, I just and i and I, I think a lot of the pushback that i get to these things is that people will instantly come back and say you know you, you don't understand what, what god is and it's like I, I i think i do and i again i don't think it matters particularly and I don't have a, you know, I have never tried to argue that somebody is or isn't God. I'm, you know, if you want to call that state God, go, you know, go for it. I, I've, so I've used that language in my sort of trip reports. You know, I, I met God. I, I was one with God. It's, that's what it feels like. But then to then start when, to, to do that final spin in it of, you know, I am the chosen one. I am the sort of Messiah. You, I am here to teach you something. And all you need to do is, sign up for this course and and you know you can be a life display that's yeah it, it it's gets ugly and then the sort of and usually the people who feel they are qualified to start teaching are just the least qualified you know th these are people who are probably having a hard time like i said controlling their ego and it really what they should be doing is dialing it down and really sort of integrating the experiences rather than going through this kind of evangelistic phase, which, you know, we, we've all been through. And I, it's something I, 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 that's why I try and put this rational frame around it because hopefully you can sort of talk them down and dial it down. Like actually do just, if you just come back to here, you'll see you don't necessarily need to be, you know, Moses on the mountain sort of waving the 10 commandments around. It's just, <laughs> no. I think it, yeah, it comes back to the kind of balance thing earlier of like the usefulness of skepticism in its right place um, to kind of trim back these ideas. Because if you, you know, as you said, like if people go down this train and they think, well, this is it, I should try and live in this enlightened state and I should try and be just purely on this kind of this trip into the absolute, but they forget that they are still exist as a kind of relative person in the world and you still have responsibilities and both of those you know there's this thing in buddhism called the doctrine of two truths which i think is really valuable just that you don't you don't just abandon this you don't say this is just an illusion that we're separate and so i'm just going to stop talking to you right now i'm going to get up and leave <laughs> like you know you can still mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the grounding to me you know you get in touch with these kind of absolute states and then you come back to this kind of grounded relative way of being and not not taking not you know remembering that we shouldn't take this way of being too seriously because there is another way um that's that's more profound and and more true and so yeah i think i think it just comes back to grounding and when people are in it i think it can be this real slippery slope but from the outside it becomes very simple you know like for you and me the people that we've seen like this it's you use the word i think you said repulsive in the way that they're kind of carrying themselves before which resonated with me and that a lot of them you just it just takes two seconds to set off alarms of being like oh like we would not be friends mm -hmm. like we would not sit and have a conversation and i would not feel like i didn't you know like enjoying my conversation with you right now it's very it's quite easy if you trust your intuition it's quite easy to tell these people um mm -hmm. but i think a lot of the time it can be yeah it can be hard to to a lot of people haven't learned to trust their intuition, I guess, and feel out whether they can trust people like that. Um, but so it's really important, I think, that you're offering your thoughts on this stuff. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, one of the things weirdly with th those kind of people is that they by by the sort of mannerisms and by the outlandish what I said, they are actually selecting an audience who is mm. extremely susceptible to this kind of stuff. So it, it's right. it, it it it's, it really is this kind of like double whammy effect and, and those and, and then they will attract this very kind of like passionate uh you know fan base and it's yeah i mean i i, I have some very strange messages of, of, of people sort of you know yeah it was just you know the usual sort of in, internet sort of sort of nonsense but it's yeah it's, I, I just i worry that some people can get very uh very lost um in in these experiences and then that will then sort of backfire on, on the entire sort of culture as, as a whole. And we end up back in the kind of like the Timothy Leary-esque sort of right. things. Cause that's, cause that is what, where a lot of these sort of, you know, guru types go. It, it, it usually inevitably ends up with, yeah, I will give you large amounts of, of substances and you will be just like me. You'll be awakened just like me. And that's, I think pretty terrifying. Um, 